Welcome to the sixth module and uh, lecture in this course on technology and the psyche. The title of this module is The Medium is the Message, and we'll be dealing primarily with the work of Marshall McLuhan. Marshall McLuhan uh, lived from 1911 to 1980. Uh, he was Canadian, uh, educated in England, uh, was a professor of English literature, a literary critic, and so on and so forth, but he's best known for his work on media theory and communication. The uh, work that we're going to be reading, Understanding Media, The Extension of Man, came out in 1964 and is generally uh, considered his masterpiece. His greatest works uh, did come out in the 60s, but now in our digital age, uh, there is a greatly rena renewed interest uh, in what he wrote, which uh, seems, if anything, now more relevant than ever, even though he preceded uh, what we think of as digital media. His uh, most popular book was a book that came out in 1967 with the punning title of The Medium is the Massage. It was co-written with Quentin Fiore, and uh, here's a sample page from the book combining words and text in a manner that has uh, become a lot more frequently used and popular since then. Uh, we're going to be reading uh, passages from a uh, relatively recent critical edition of Understanding Media, edited by Terence Gordon, and I think that uh, Terence Gordon has done a fantastic job with this edition. Uh, I think that his introductions and notes are really quite uh, superb and helpful. Uh, McLuhan's statements uh, that the medium is the message uh, is in fact an indication of one of his fundamental tenets, which is that when we're dealing with communications media such as printing, uh, radio, the motion picture, uh, television, and more recently uh, the web, the way that the content of a message is shaped uh, by the medium it is communicated uh, in or with uh, is certainly equally, if not more important, than uh, the content of the message itself. As the editor tells us in his introduction, uh, McLuhan came back time and again uh, to the uh, short story by Edgar Allan Alan Poe, Descent into the Maelstrom, and specifically to the protagonist of the story, who's a Norwegian sailor who's caught in this uh, tremendous whirlpool and survives uh, only because he has the presence of mind to pay close attention into in uh, what is otherwise uh, quite an overwhelming situation. Uh, we'll be reading and uh, discussing uh, later in this lecture Edgar Allan Poe's famous story. Here, uh, all I really want to say is that this feeling of being overwhelmed uh, by mediated information is one that I think, uh, certainly I, but uh, all of us are finding increasingly familiar given the barrage of what comes at us now, not only through uh, radio, television, and so on, but through the web, the smartphones, uh, and their various other forms of digital media. The appearance of a new communications technology or communications uh, medium causes uh, what McLuhan calls uh, a social implosion. It affects uh, the entire psychic and social complex um, into which it enters. And McLuhan speaks a lot about uh, the differences in the ways that, uh, say, a technology like radio will affect Western countries dif differently than it will affect, uh, say, tribal societies in Africa. Uh, McLuhan says, in one really interesting passage, uh, our proliferating technologies have created a whole series of new environments. 
today technologies and their consequent environments succeed each other so rapidly that one environment makes us aware of the next. Technologies begin to perform the function of art in making us aware of the psychic and social consequences of technology. McLuhan reminds us that uh, Ezra Pound, who's depicted here, called uh, artists the antennae of the race. Of course, uh, art has always uh, very much uh, depended and been interdependent with uh, the medium of or in which uh, a work is created. And McLuhan says, uh, the power of the arts to anticipate future social and technological developments has long been recognized. If art is an early warning system, art has the utmost relevance not only to media study, but to the development of media controls. In other words, uh, we don't need to be completely lost in or overwhelmed by uh, the media maelstrom. And McLuhan's book, Understanding Media, is intended precisely uh, to give us some signposts in understanding uh, this technology, uh, which has become so much of a part of our environment. McLuhan has uh, some fun actually critiquing uh, this gentleman, uh, David Sarnoff, one of the great media moguls of the mid 20th century, the head of RCA and the head and founder of NBC. Uh, in a speech uh, at uh, Notre Dame, Sarnoff made the statement, we are too prone to make technological instruments the scapegoats for the sins of those who wield them. The products of modern science are not in themselves good or bad. It is the way they are used that determines their value. I'm sure we've all heard um, similar statements made uh, in several different contexts. What McLuhan has to say is that uh, that is the voice of the current somnambulism. I am not being perverse. There is simply nothing in the Sarnoff statement that will bear scrutiny, for it ignores the nature of the medium of any and all media. In other words, and once again, that the medium itself exerts a profound influence uh, no matter what may be communicated in that specific medium. If we focus, as McLuhan urges us to do, on the impact of uh, the medium, uh, the communication technology itself, as opposed to uh, the content expressed within that uh, medium or technology, we become, as William Blake put it, what we behold. And if uh, art is a prescient early warning system, then uh, you might say that this work of McLuhan's is in fact a work of art. It certainly uh, provides a uh, very forward-looking description of the impact of digital media, both on individuals and society uh, in our own day. In the second chapter of Understanding Media, uh, McLuhan introduces uh, one of his uh, best known and most interesting concepts, that of the distinction between hot and cool media. Hot media such as motion pictures and radio supply, McLuhan says, um, enough information, or rather uh, a lot of information, enough information so that participation is more passive than active. Whereas in a cool medium such as television, and I would venture to say uh, the web, less information is supplied so that more participation is uh, demanded. The, the nature of the participation uh, or interaction with the medium is far more active since the viewer, as it were, uh, is required to fill in the blanks. However, as you might uh, suspect, this is not a static opposition between hot and cool. In fact, it's an example of the Jungian 
principle of enantiodromia, that the uh, abundance of any force inevitably produces its opposite. Jung was uh, relying or deriving this concept from uh, the pre-Socratic philosopher Heraclitus, who said, cold things warm, warm things cool, wet things dry, and parched things get wet. Or as McLuhan says, when all the available resources and energies have been played up in an organism or in any structure, there is some kind of reversal of pattern. So I suppose you could say that a hot medium such as film uh, gave rise to and was balanced by the cool medium of television. I have yet really to uh, see this principle in operation with respect to digital media, but uh, it seems very uh, possible that there will be some sort of enantiodromia taking place in this context. McLuhan looks at this enantiodromia, particularly in uh, the third chapter, reversal of the overheated medium. I think in the present context, um, his statement on page 54 is particularly interesting. Uh, at another level, we have seen in this century the changeover from the debunking of traditional myths and legend to their reverent study. He also talks about the reversal now proceeding apace by which the Western world is going Eastern, even as the East goes Western and that our contemporary consciousness is becoming uh, more conscious of the unconscious. The interest in ancient myth, uh, in cross-culturalism, and in uh, what's known as depth psychology, uh, characteristic of Jung and such Jungians as Joseph Campbell, and is of particular interest at Pacifica, is as a result, uh, McLuhan would postulate uh, of this enantiodromia. On page 58, McLuhan says, the present chapter is concerned with showing that in any medium or structure, there is what Kenneth Boulding calls a break boundary at which the system suddenly changes into another or passes some point of no return in its dynamic processes. On page 59, McLuhan says, in the ancient world, the intuitive awareness of break boundaries as points of reversal and of no return was embodied in the Greek idea of hubris. Here's a depiction of uh, the death of uh, the Greek king uh, Agamemnon, the leader of the Greek forces during the uh, Trojan War, who was killed upon his return to Greece by his wife Clytemnestra. In uh, Aeschylus' tragedy, Ag Agamemnon, there's one uh, section in particular that talks about uh, the relationship between koros, hubris, and ate. Koros uh, means too much, K-O-R-O-S, uh, and once something uh, oversteps its bounds, we get uh, hubris a fatal overreaching which leads to ate, uh, destruction. And I think it's fascinating the way that McLuhan integrates this process with uh, the way in which media follow one another. In chapter four, uh, The Gadget Lover, Narcissus as Narcosis, McLuhan discusses our relationship to media technology, which uh, after all, he calls the extensions of man in terms of the Greek myth of Narcissus. He uh, is at great pains to point out that Narcissus is not falling in love with himself, but rather with an image of himself that he does not recognize as himself, and that he is narcotized uh, or put to sleep by uh, uh, ensorcelled uh, by that image uh, whose reality he doesn't recognize. I think it's important to recognize that what McLuhan is doing is both exploring uh, the profound effects of media, the effects that media technology uh, has on us individually and uh, socially or collectively, effects that are undeniable 
and cannot simply be wished away. And uh, also pointing out some of the dangers uh, inherent in uh, the effects of media technology. With respect to this narcosis, uh, McLuhan says on page 69, the principle of numbness comes into play with electric technology as with any other. We have to numb our central nervous system when it is extended exposed or we will die. Thus the age of anxiety and of electric media is also the age of the unconscious and of apathy, but it is strikingly the age of consciousness of the unconscious in addition. He also says uh, that it is the time of transition between media that uh, is one particularly uh, prone to waking us up out of our narcosis. He says the hybrid of or the meeting of two media is a moment of truth and revelation from which new form is born. For the parallel between two media holds us on the frontiers between forms that snap us, snap us out of the narcissus narcosis. The moment of the meeting of media is a moment of freedom and release from the ordinary trance and numbness imposed by them on our senses. Certainly, I think that this was true uh, during the advent of the web in the late 90s. Uh, I'm wondering, however, uh, if that moment of awakening uh, hasn't uh, already passed now in our day. In chapter seven, uh, Challenge and Collapse, the nemesis of creativity, uh, which could just as easily have been subtitled The Promise of Creativity, McLuhan uh, speaks of the artist as a figure also able to wake us up from uh, our uh, narcosis. McLuhan discusses a number of different artists, but uh, uh, one in particular who stands out is James Joyce. And in this way, I really think that McLuhan is very much a citizen of his own era, an era in which uh, such figures as Joyce and Picasso were singled out as being artists with a capital A. On uh, pages 95 and 96, McLuhan says, in the history of human culture, there is no example of a conscious adjustment of the various factors of personal and social life to new extensions, that is to new media, except in the puny and peripheral efforts of artists. The artist picks up the message of cultural and technological challenge decades before its transforming impact occurs. He then goes on to say on page 97, I am curious to know what would happen if art were suddenly to be seen for what it is, namely exact information of how to rearrange one psyche in order to anticipate the next blow from our own extended faculties. Once again, uh, artists are our antennae, our early warning system, uh, if only we will uh, be aware of and listen to them. In this context, I'm very much reminded of Levi Strauss's uh, assertion that the artist stands midway between the bricoleur or mythologist on the one hand and uh, the scientist and engineer on the other. I'm also asking you to read this week Edgar Allan Poe's short story, Descendant to the Maelstrom, uh, which figures uh, importantly in McLuhan's work. The story speaks more or less for itself. However, uh, it is worthwhile to note that in a sense, uh, the Norwegian sailor who is the protagonist of the story is a type of uh, figure of the artist in McLuhan's sense of artist. That is someone who uh, by dint of uh, becoming highly aware and conscious of what is going on around him in uh, this otherwise overwhelming experience, uh, just as media technology uh, overwhelm us. By this act of careful attention, he is able uh, to uh, escape and overcome his dilemma or predicament. I thought it might be useful uh, to show you a map of Norway with uh, Nordland, the region in which uh, the story takes place, uh, marked out in red.
also wanted to make you uh, aware in closing of a really uh, wonderful film that is too little known from 1945 called I Know Where I'm Going, uh, which features a maelstrom in the ocean. This film is by um, the British director Michael Powell and producer Emmerich Pressburger, who did a number of wonderful films in the late uh, 30s, 40s, and 50s. The best known are probably uh, The Red Shoes and Thief of Baghdad, uh, as well as Stairway to Heaven. Uh, this film is certainly uh, up there among them, carries through some of the themes uh, of Poe's story in a very uh, different sort of uh, differently poetic manner and is really well worth seeing.